Okay, so last time we saw that for an open, open tube or an open, open pipe, a pipe where both ends were open, there were only particular wavelengths that were allowed because you had to have anti-nodes at both ends. So you had that one, we had this one, we had this one, and we found the wavelength of all of these, and then we realized, wait a minute, we can write down a formula. For any possible wavelength in an open, open tube, and it depends only on the length of the tube, L, and N, and N is the which harmonic we're talking about. One is the fundamental, two is the second harmonic, three is the third harmonic, four, and so on. And this gave you every possible wavelength. The question is, can we do the same thing if we had an open closed end? What happens if one end's closed? What if we close this end off so that it's not open anymore? Well, let's do that right now. Here we go. Here's a closed end right here. This end is closed. This is more like a soda bottle, because this end would be open, the top that you drink out of, and the bottom's closed off. We've got air inside. If you blow over the top, what possible frequencies, what possible wavelengths could you set up? Well, what do we know here? We know that this end, this air is open, or this side is open, and so this air molecule can oscillate wildly. What, it, what type of node is that going to be? That's going to be an anti-node, since it could oscillate a lot. But this end over here, these air molecules keep bumping into the side, it's got to be a node over on this end because there can't be any displacement. So what do we do here? Okay, so this end's a node. We know that. I'm going to put this on the axis here because I know this end has no displacement. We're graphing displacement again versus x. And this is, in this case, horizontal displacement. This end's going to oscillate wildly, so I know this is going to be an anti-node. So I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to draw the simplest possible wave that can go from this anti-node to this node is going to look like this anti-node and it just goes curve right down to the node. That's it. What wavelength is this? Well, in terms of the length of this tube, so if this is L, what wavelength is this in terms of L? Well, we've got to figure out how much of a wavelength this is. That's always the trick. This is what freaks students out. They don't like figuring out how many wavelengths is this, but it's not too hard. First thing I like to do is draw what I know one wavelength looks like. So what does one wavelength look like? One wavelength looks like this. Okay, if we start up here, a wavelength is going all the way and then back to the same point in the process. So there we go. That's one entire wavelength, at least if this is a versus x graph, it is. So how much of a wavelength is this pink line for this first fundamental frequency, this first fundamental wavelength? Starts at the top. So let's start at the top. And it goes, and this thing just goes till the first crossing of the axis, and that's the node, and so this thing crosses the axis here. That's it. That's all we got. We got a big, long, what is this? This is one-fourth of a wavelength, because so that's one-fourth. And it gets to here. That's another fourth. Here's another fourth, and here's another fourth. So this is only one-fourth of a wavelength. That's hard for a lot of people to see. The whole thing's one wavelength. Half of it is a half, so if I cut it in half, that's a half, and I cut this half in half again, I get one-fourth. So what I find out is that, okay, the length L equals one-fourth of a wavelength in this case. Our fundamental wavelength divided by four equals the length of this tube. So if I want to know what the wavelength is, that means my wavelength for the fundamental open-closed case is 4L. So I'm going to write that over here. Lambda equals 4L, and this would be the fundamental wavelength for this open-closed tube. And this is bigger. For open-open, it was 2L, so it's 4L. How about the next one? All right, we got to start at an anti-node, and we got to end at a node. The next simplest case, and well, we had no nodes in between. We only had one at the end, so now I need a node in the middle. So I'm going to create a node in the middle, and then I have to get all the way back to the anti or to the node on this end. So I've got one node here, I've got a node at the end. Then I've got this anti node here and an anti node up here. How much wave how many wavelengths is this? Let's figure it out. Start at the top. All right, this goes all the way down past the node and back up. So all the way down past the node, back up and ends at a node. That's how much of a wavelength I've got here. So how much is this? Well, it's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. So this time L is the length of my tube, 
The amount of wavelengths fitting into L in this case is three-fourths of a wavelength. And again, if I solve that for wavelength, I get, solve and I get 4L over 3. So the next possible wavelength is 4L over 3. And if we solve for the next one, let's draw it. Started an antinode, ended a node. The next possible one, well, the last one had one node. This time it's going to have two nodes. I'm going to come down here. One node, two node, and then it gets back to the node at the end. So a node at this end. It has to be a node at this end because it's closed. This time I have two nodes in the middle. And I have an antinode on this end and two antinodes in the middle. So how many, how many wavelengths is this? All right, let's figure it out. Start at the top. All right, it comes down. Let's just trace it out. Down hits that first and hits that first node. Down to the anti node. Back up to the node. Now I've gotten to here, but I keep going. I go up to the top. I'm not done yet. Now I'm back up to here. I have to keep going one more fourth of a wavelength. So this is more than a wavelength. This time L equals. Well, this is one whole wavelength just to this point right here. And then I have to add one more fourth of a wavelength to that. So this is one wavelength and a fourth. Or another way to say that is that this is five fourths of a wavelength. Five fourths of a wavelength because just to here is one whole wavelength. And I have to add one more fourth to that. So if I solve for lambda, I get lambda is 4L. Oh, we see a pattern. Patterns are great. 4L over 5. This next wavelength possible is 4L over 5. And shoot we can do this now now I see enough if I want to write down any possible wavelength it's gonna be 4L, 4L, 4L over 3, 4L over 5, the next one to be 4L over 7 I get that the possible wavelengths for an open closed tube are 4L over N except instead of being any possible integer the only allowed integers are the odd ones so I'm not allowed to put in two or four, it's got to be one, three, five, and so on. And so here's the formula. This is it. If I wanted to know what are the possible wavelengths allowed in an open closed tube, this is it. It depends on the length, it depends on n. Looks just like the case for open, open, except it was 2L for that case. This case is 4L on top, four times the length of the tube. And on the bottom, it's only the odd integers. That means I only get the odd harmonics. This 4L over 3. I wouldn't call this the second harmonic, I'd call this the third harmonic. And this five down here, I wouldn't call this the third, I'd call this the fifth. You're, we're, missing, we're missing all the even harmonics on this case for an open-closed tube, so it's a little bit strange, but that's what happens when you have an antinode at this end and a node required at that end. And so you could try this. Look, this is a function of L. If you want to test this out, next time you're drinking a soda, look, if the L is large, if the length of your tube is large, that means the wavelength should be large. And if the wavelength is large, well, let's see, V equals lambda F. So if you've got a big wavelength, that'll mean a small frequency because the speed won't change. The speed's determined by the medium, and you're probably not changing the temperature of the medium all that much. Maybe you've got ice in your drink or something, but... If it melts, it'll change a little bit. It's not going to change the speed by that much. So if you increase the length, you'll increase the wavelength. You'll decrease the frequency. Low frequency means a low note. You'll hear a lower, bassy note. And so try this. I want you to try this out next time you're drinking a soda. Or whatever. Maybe it's a healthy beverage. Uh, whatever it is. You've got some soda here. It's up to some level. This part acts... This wherever the water's at acts as the bottom of the tube. So right now I only have a tube this length because the top is open and the bottom is basically wherever this water level is because the air can't get past that water level. So this would only be a length of that. But as you keep drinking, keep blowing over the top. And as you keep blowing over the top, listen for what note you hear. And you should keep hearing a lower note. The lower this gets, so once it's down to here, now your length the length of your tube is bigger. It's open at the top, closed at the bottom. You'll hear an even lower note. Once it gets down to here, when you finish, now it's even longer. You'll hear a much lower note. So the note should get lower and lower. Not louder and louder, but lower and lower. The frequency should sound lower and lower. The lower your drink gets, because the higher the length, bigger the wavelength, smaller the frequency.